Mushoku Tensei Episode 19 Rudy becomes the Full Metal Alchemist. You thought not much was skipped? So did I until I checked out the Mushoku Light Novel. So go ahead and smash that thumbs up, and definitely consider subscribing, I think like half of you aren't subbed yet. And a special thank you to today's sponsor, Boxu. Since I know you have a craving for Japanese snacks, Boxu's here for you. And trust me when I say they give you quite the variety from all over Japan. I've been living in Japan 3 years now, and still, each month, this has allowed me to try something new. With the holidays right around the corner, Boxu also makes a great gift idea. A few years back, my buddy John actually gave me one of these as a gift. Till this day, I still have good memories of that. So this is pretty perfect for anyone in your life that loves anime or Japanese culture. But wait, it just gets better. Box is giving you a chance to win tickets to come visit Japan. They will be picking 5 lucky winners with a plus 1 to come visit Japan. Just use my code and click the link down below. That'll get you 10% off Boxu. Anyone that subscribed to Boxu by the end of the year will be entered to win the trip to Japan. Winners will have a few years to actually redeem the tickets. So there is no rush and you can plan with these. So click the top link down below to check out the term and conditions and other forms of entry. The anime motherland is ready for you. Let's go ahead and give a warm welcome to our buddy, the man god. Right away you heard Rudy bringing up how this guy conveniently missed out on that Paul info. Light novel Rudy really just accused him of being entertained by the entire thing. That wasn't it so funny that he and Paul were getting into this family drama. Him getting all depressed, needing Eris to cheer him back up. Then with Rudy asking about his entire family, where are they? Rudy also brought up previous events. That he couldn't tell him where his family was, but he so happened to just arrange him to meet the world's greatest demon emperor. Come on Rudy, give him a break for that one. The anime then skipped Hitogami's follow-up to this. That he agreed, oh I wronged you. Since that's the case, why don't we decide on some rules? For example, when is the next time he'll drop by to give him advice? Rudy on the other hand wasn't having any of this. How about coming again in a hundred years? In other words, implying that Rudy would be in the grave by then. Quite the jokester. I'm actually surprised the anime skipped this more important part. Rudy did suggest giving him a warning. Or you know, how about just using someone else's dreams and then have them pass a message over to Rudy. This is where the man got said it would be difficult. That there's actually certain conditions needed for him to appear in someone's dream. That he could only appear in someone's dream who was in the same wavelength as him. What are those conditions you may be wondering? Who knows? The man god claimed he didn't even know himself. That it kinda just happened when he felt the tingle. And then for the man god telling Rudy not to use his real name. In the light novel, he actually explicitly suggested using the dead end title. Instead of just some random alias. In the light novel, man god had more to say before he left. Oh, did I happen not to give you enough information? If I tell you too much, it's just gonna spoil my fun. So have fun, Rudy. Anyway, back on the boat. For a different anime changeup, by the point that Man God contacted him, they were actually already on the central continent. Also, Rudy's excuse to Richard was different. He blamed it on his eye of foresight. And since we're on the demon eye topic, up until this point he had been using the eye to see a few seconds into the future, which now made Rudy realize what was going on. That that vision Man God had showed him was actually the future, very likely using the demon eye. At this, Rudy actually started tracing back his steps in time. Had the demon eye really been that useful? I mean, even some of you in the comments have mentioned why doesn't Rudy use it more often? So perhaps, just maybe, the whole reason that the human god got Rudy to meet that great demon emperor was to get this tool that enabled him to show him the future. In the anime, you somewhat do see this sprinkled throughout the episode, but at this point, Rudy was getting more suspicious of the man god. That perhaps Rudy was just being used for something. Why had the guy not tried to contact Rudy beforehand? Why did he only contact him after the displacement incident? Why did he tell him to rely on Richard? It felt like all of these things were connected. All of this led into Rudy's 5 second wall theory. That perhaps one of those conditions was that he couldn't manipulate Richard directly. That maybe he triggered the displacement incident to teleport Rudy over and eventually indirectly get Richard's help. Rudy at this point actually did want to inform Richard about him. But Rudy held back. After all, he already troubled Richard so much. Not to mention he did think that Richard would probably be easily persuaded over to the human god side. Light novel Rudy even went as far as giving Richard a quick warning. Bro, watch your back. And naturally, you couldn't end this whole segment without a Rudy moment skit. You had Rudy looking at Eris sleeping. Oh, she doesn't wear a bra, you say? But still, ultimately, Rudy was a gentleman this time. He actually pulled Eris' shirt back down and even covered her up. Getting over to the central continent. Rudy is now 12. Since the displacement incident, two whole years have passed by. 
All right, so the dead end meeting time. Rudy went ahead and laid out three travel plans for his buddies. Here's some juicy world building info skipped. In front of him, Rudy laid out a simple map. It turns out making and selling maps was strictly prohibited in this country. The reason was to prevent other countries from getting a hold of them. Anyway, option one, really to use a standard main trade route. Time-wise, it would take them 10 months to get over to their destination. Option two, they could take a detour west and head into the large forest. It was a pretty dense forest across the King Dragon Mountains. This made it impossible for them to travel by carriage, so they would have to switch over to horse. You could just picture all three of them on this tiny pony. All of this meant the time estimate was unknown. Option three, this would actually involve taking a ship over to the bigger continent, and then from there heading over to their destination. Here's some juicy world building skip for the bigger continent, that the mana there was actually thicker than on the demon continent. The average beast there also compared to the demon continent. The difference involved this continent having a bunch of labyrinths underground, which created this weird weather pattern on the surface. The top climate there was pretty much a desert. You had giant scorpions the size of a great tortoise, some colossal worms. Is that a Dune reference? The days here were super hot, the nights were icy cold, so you're getting the idea, it's pretty much just a wasteland. As for that Raiso Nigiri scene, this is anime original. Switching over to Shirone at lightning speed. You did have Eris asking about Rudy's master, Roxy. Originally, you did see light novel Rudy hesitating a bit, which really showed Rudy conflicted over using the word master. You may recall Roxy not liking Rudy addressing him like that. And still, Rudy continued, his eternal monologue kept praising the hell out of her. There was even a callback to that amazing dictionary for the demon kind. You should also notice this entire discussion took place before they got to the kingdom. This capital actually wasn't on their travel plans in the first place. So let's actually get into this chunky anime skip, the adventure between East Post and the stops along the way to reaching the kingdom. Let's go back a few months. First stop at Wyvern. One week here. The initial plan was to only spend three days, but their carriage broke down. Rudy ultimately didn't find any info here, which is likely why the anime skipped it. Perhaps the biggest thing worth noting here is that Rudy actually managed to find some yellowish rice, and then tried to cook it. So yes, Rudy finally had his raw egg over rice, and Eris was happy too. A win-win. Moving along, there still were two more countries between them and their destination. First off, the Shinokiya Kingdom. One of the most notable things was the rice cultivation. In the anime opening, you were able to see all the rice paddies. For something else interesting about the Dead End name, on the central continent, this Dead End title actually didn't shock anyone. Rudy compared it to someone being famous in the US. Or this fun comparison that children definitely need Superman, but might not know who Captain America is. It's funny because isn't that the opposite right now? Ultimately, all of this was perhaps a good thing, that it should be easier to restore Ridger's reputation if people weren't scared of him. As for Eris throughout this, it turned out that the playful Eris wasn't really fighting other adventurers anymore. You might not be able to tell from the anime, but she didn't look like a novice anymore. That one look at this beast would tell you she was dangerous. And it really feels like the anime is missing this part. That Eris had come a long way to understanding this adventurer's style of humor. That she was actually able to take it and quickly answer back. Although some things may never change. If someone really wanted to, she was always game to start a fight. Next up, the Kika Kingdom. Rice was also a staple for this kingdom. And get this, Rudy even finally found Kareage. It's making me want some. In Isekai Mushoku Land, let's just say it still needed some work. It's funny because Roger Daenerys loved the hell out of it, while Rudy just continued being known as his picky eater. Next up, finally getting to the Shirone Kingdom. But you wouldn't know it from the anime, but this adventure took four freaking months. And people were mad at SAO jumping floors. This kingdom was old and small with a 200 year history. This was notable because all the human countries except the Sura Kingdom and the holy country of Milis were wiped out during that war 400 years ago. You know, the one between the humans and the demons. Notably, there were so many labyrinths scattered throughout this place, which meant there was money to be made. Naturally, you did have a Rudy moment skipped. Oh yes, demon lady, let me wash her feet. This then led into Rudy trying to think about fake names. How about using ones he previously heard like Shina? or Radar. But doesn't matter, Rudy ultimately chose the Shadow Moon Knight. This is actually supposed to be a common writer reference. Bonus points if you're at all familiar with that. The anime also skipped it, but Eris would have been the sword, and Richard would have been the lance of the Shadow Moon. Anyway, getting into Rudy's letter, finally writing it at advance this time. He actually sealed it with wax and then imprinted Roxy's pendant onto it. He also happened to use his real name. Just gotta make it extremely obvious for Roxy. 
You also had this anime moment of Rudy daydreaming over Roxy in this box, or not. Then for Rudy busting out the Lost of Alchemy to break down the dirt wall. He actually used Earth magic to weaken it, while at the same time using Wind magic to trigger a shockwave and bring it down. Then let's take a look at poor Aisha. Aww. Keep your hands off that lily, otherwise he wouldn't like Rudy when he's angry. So let's get into the anime change here that got me a little sad. First off, something small. In the anime, they actually did not tear Aisha's letter up. For the actual soldiers, the enemy skipped Rudy blasting a stone cannon and then these guys blocking it. This is some reaction speed, you know, the water got style. This was followed by Rudy creating another mud pit and then spamming more of that stone cannon. But this is what I really wanted to see in the anime, a major cut. It was after Rudy blasted off. He actually landed on his legs and broke them. Completely shattered. I was just waiting for this. But don't worry, Aisha was okay, she just tinkled herself. And don't you worry about Rudy, it was only a scratch, a temporary setback, he just healed them right up. Anyway, back at the inn, you did have Rudy cleaning Aisha that got skipped. So yes, Rudy having fun with the lowly? I don't mind not seeing this. It just gave me flashbacks of my own vending machine on the adventure. On the other hand, you did have this subtle but major cut for Rudy. That even fully seeing the entirety of Aisha, Rudy's little fella down there didn't get excited. He went on to mention he never had any interest in Zenny's either. This means this is one of the times that the Mushoko light novel emphasized that this rebirth, this reincarnation had affected his mental state. And the anime completely didn't bother showcasing this. So let's get into the fun. You had Aisha bringing up knowing about his Onichan being this degenerate. The anime simplified this only being related to Rudy's holy relic. But there was more to it. Aisha just didn't buy someone that young having this immense mastery over magic. On top of that, then becoming Eris's tutor. All of this had to be a lie. By the way, you should notice, Aisha getting that 14 year old calculation was anime new. Oh, shots fired on Roxy. Then for Aisha hearing the Kennel Master name, for some reason in the light novel she also thought that Rudy could spam summoning magic too. The anime skipped this, but this was Rudy's plan. He was going to hide his identity until he ran into Lydia. Hopefully by then he could have restored his reputation with Aisha. And overall, this is really just a fun sister update. Norn hates Rudy's guts. Aisha thinks he's a freaking pervert. It makes me thankful my sisters don't hate me. At least I hope so. Further skip was the explanation of how Aisha and Lilia ended up in the castle. They both suddenly appear, so they both appear suspicious and got arrested. That's not surprising, but they have been confined an awfully long time. As for Aisha's plan of attack, you heard her mentioning that she wanted to send this letter to Paula. The problem is that she didn't know where the guild was, which is why she was following Rudy. The anime also cut Rudy's conversation with Aisha short, but Aisha just kept on spamming questions. She asked about the demon continent. Surprisingly, Rudy did admit that he was also caught in the displacement incident. Light novel Aisha actually was getting really close to his brother's identity. Rudy really just thought that Aisha was so smart they never ran out of topics to talk about. What started off weird actually ended up becoming their first real conversation that Rudy had with his sister. This one. <laughs> Alright, so getting into Richard and Eris coming in, Rudy originally wondered, did they get into a fight again? That they looked apologetic. You're gonna see why in a little bit. On a different note, I just got this big old dumb smile at the thought of Roger pouting over not being able to storm the castle. Sorry, big boy. Let me also quickly mention it here that there is a manga version for it. You should notice that the manga events are completely different. If anything, it's the opposite quick run version of what happened. You know, with Eris and Roger also tagging along. Just keep that in mind as we go forward. For a new anime scene, you did have the slumbering Eris eating up Aisha. I thought that was adorable. Before leaving, Rudy also took that Rudyard figure with him. For an unfortunate anime skip, aw, no Eris head pats before leaving. Come on. So heading towards the castle, I was also curious to see how the anime would handle this. And hey, the anime just skipped it. This involving the slave market. This included some exposed females too. Is the anime just moving this potential outrage till later, I suppose? I didn't mind this Rudy moment getting skipped, since he looked over at the exposed girls and saw something he liked. Come on, this isn't the slave isekai harem, Rudy. They did reiterate that slavery itself wasn't a bad thing in this world. Although for Rudy, this was the first time he saw slaves being sold so openly on the main street. You do have to thank Richard and Eris for this. It was these two that got in a fight in the area where the slave market was held, so now they temporarily held it out here on the main street. By the way, quick update for this, I have been working on my notes for the Rujid video. Do hit the like if you want to see that. The thing is, there is so much the anime didn't cover, I might need to do a two-parter. Next up inside the castle, here's a different anime skip regarding Roxy. It turns out that Roxy actually helped these soldiers train, which amounted to Roxy pretty much blasting magic at them. 
This is the reason they were actually able to deflect magic earlier in the fight versus Rudy. Then for the Ginger Knight, she originally did mention her rank. She claimed to be 12th among the knights. For something nearly added for the anime, you did have the guards right before the door. Those being the same ones that were trying to snatch Aisha back. For a different new anime subtle detail, you did see the Knight Ginger hesitating a little bit. Like wanting to warn Rudy. Alright, so let's welcome this little spoiled brat. Fun fact for this guy, did you notice he's actually Kazuma's voice actor? Misha Kotens is just missing Subaru now. Come on, bring him. Then for poor anime Lilia, no longer in this comfy chair. For another anime cut, you did have Rudy thinking that there's no Roxy here, that there is no god. I was a really a fan of this reoccurring plot point, so I'm not a fan that the anime is skipping this. Anyway, let's get into the actual situation at hand. You might be wondering whether this Pax dude was really that stupid. To give the guy some credit, he was actually not trying to make enemies of a different part of the Rudy's family. For a different anime skit for Lilia, you did have Pax originally using his pen pen on her. You did have Lilia offering to just do whatever they want with her, just spare Rudy. This is actually followed by another harder smack. From this one, it seems like Lilia got knocked out completely. Then for a fun light novel detail I did like, they did go on about how the soldiers actually weren't on this a-hole side. Of course, they were bound by orders, but they really didn't want Aisha to try to get away. By the way, fun fact for Aisha's voice actress, it's Elma from the Dragon Maid anime. So, did you like this Mushoku episode? How are you liking Aisha? Did Rudy fall for that trap way too easily? Or maybe you prefer the manga version of this assault? For this video, I actually finally got a good look at it. It almost felt like fan fiction. Post any thoughts of the episode down below, or just say hi, I do try to read all the comments. And as always, if you do enjoy these videos, smash that like. I do wake up pretty early, like at 4 or 5, or stay up to like 5 a.m. to finish these on time. But anyway, check out my deep dive going into Roxy's adventure before Rudy, or last week's Mushoku video. My second channel does have a juicy video on my hot take for the Cowboy Bebop live action. Enjoy those, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.